Hello again everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a realistic looking drop shadow um, coming from a figure or a person. So what we're going to do is, it's quite a, uh, an easy thing to do, so it's going to take too long at all. So what you'll need to do is, you'll need to have Photoshop open and let's get a file and new. We're going to create a new document. I'm just going to choose the web preset just to give us a small file size and there it is there, I'm going to zoom in. Now the next thing we're going to do is you want to open uh, a photograph or picture of the per a person. So I've got one here that I've saved to my desktop and I'm going to open that one up and it's going to open it up in a different tab. Now with the move tool selected I'm going to click hold and drag up to this tab here. Keep holding the mouse button down, drag and drop it onto the artboard. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move him into position slightly and I'm going to press and hold command and press T and let's change the size of him. Hold shift down, grab the corner and click and drag to resize. Let go of shift, drag him up, click, shift again and hold and resize him until you get the size that you want. Alright, that's looking pretty good, I might go with that. Press enter or double click to set the free transform control. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to create a drop shadow. So with your person layer selected, go down to the effects button down here. And if you click that, you'll notice you might have to scroll down. The last option there is drop shadow. Let's select that one. And this will bring up this dialog box here. So what you need to do in this dialog box is, um, you can see the drop shadow is already taking place there. You can change the angle of it. I'm just going to have it so it's coming out directly from the left of the figure. Uh, you can probably take the opacity down to maybe about 70 or 80 percent, depending on your preference, so that the shadow looks like it's blurred and it's not completely opaque. Now, the size of it, if you've got no size, it'll, you'll have these sharp edges. So if you start dragging the size up, you'll edges will start to blur, um, which is what we want. So that looks pretty good about there. They are the only three options you need to really muck around with in here. Size, distance, four, sorry, angle, and opacity. Once you're happy, click OK. There's our drop shadow. Now the drop shadow is attached to the person layer. So what we want to do is we want to separate it onto its own layer. In order to do that, we need to go up to layer and we need to go to uh, layer style and all the way down the bottom here, create layer. Let's select that one. Click OK. What that's going to do is it's going to put that drop shadow onto its own layer. So you can see I've got a new layer here, it's called layer 2's drop shadow. So if I select that layer and now with my move tool, I can move that wherever I want. I'm just going to undo that. The next thing to do is, let's use Command T to free transform this. Let's rotate it. I'm going to have it so that it's coming directly behind him and it's going to go in to be laying on the ground. I'm going to rotate it and every photograph of yours will be different. So it's just a matter of mucking around with the free transform controls and getting what you want. I might just squash him a little bit like that. Now, a good trick to do is, Hold the command key down and you'll notice when I hold do that, it, the cursor changes. And what that enables me to do is it enables me to kind of skew or bend just this corner. So I can bring the, start bringing the shadow down to where his foot kind of is there. All right, and I'm gonna grab this one and just move that shadow back there. So you can do it with each of the points that you can grab. And then it's just a matter of you can still come back up here and start adjusting the size. You can adjust the angle a bit more if you wanted to. Make it a bit longer. Make it a bit skinnier. All right, it's up to you and it's up to the image that you've got to try to get it to look as realistic as possible. Some images this will work better for with others. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, to set the free transform controls, just press enter and there's your shadow. Now, what is really cool thing to do is, is if you've got a background image which in, as part of your class task you would have taken those photographs is to now put your background image uh, behind. So let's get a file open. 
I've just got something I found off the internet for this lessons example, just of the beach. I'm going to open it, open it in its new tab with the move tool selected again, click, hold and drag up to our document and while still holding, let go and drop our beach in there. And now you can see I've got straight into this beach scene. Now you'll notice the drop shadow is gone and that's because um, we've dropped it directly below our person layer. I can hide him, show you that. And it's on top of our drop shadow layer. So we can't see, if I move this, you'll see the drop shadow appear behind it. So what we're gonna to do to solve that, just click your drop shadow layer or your beach layer and just change the order by clicking and holding and dragging one on top of or underneath or the other. Just like that, move our drop shadow. Okay, save your work and have a go with that and see what you can come up with.